Have you ever wondered how to create a perfect music loop for a video game? Let's talk about it. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to create a perfect music loop to use in a video game. Now, the purpose of a loop is whenever you're in a video game environment and the music is repeating endlessly, it's because the composer delivered a one-time loop piece of music that once put inside the video game engine, the engine reads it and knows to repeat it. Pretty simple, right? But when we deliver this as the composer, we have to make sure that our music is cut perfectly and that when it's thrown in, it will actually loop properly without any weird clicks or pops or distortions. So we have to prepare our music in this fashion. So we're gonna do this today using the free software Audacity. To download this, go to Audacity team.org slash download. You can actually download this for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And if you want to convert to MP3s, which is something we're gonna be doing today, make sure that you hop on over to the plugins page. And at the bottom, you will notice there are some links to download the LAME, L-A-M-E encoder, which allows you to directly from Audacity convert to an MP3. So let's jump into Logic, which is my DAW where I am writing the soundtrack for Beard Blade. Let's take one of the short loops that I've written. This is actually the Elixir theme, one of the power-ups in the game. So in order to export this directly from Logic, I actually set my looper bar, which is this gold bar. All I do is click and drag all the way from the beginning to the end because I want that exact amount of music to export. And then all I do is go to bounce, so file, bounce, project or section. And of course you can do this in any DAW, but I prefer Logic because it has that cool looper bar and it tells me exactly, because it's selected, what the time code is. So in this case, bar 1025, beat one, all the way to 1035, beat one. It automatically did that based on my selection. I'm going to select real time, make sure up here my destination is PCM, not MP3, because we want the pure source file, which is a wave over here, 24 bit, 48,000, which also is called 48K. And that is my sample rate. Um, you don't want to change that after the fact, but usually if you can start your session in 48K, you're going to get a better quality that can then be compressed down to a smaller size, such as an MP3 later. I always prefer to do real time because, well, dealing with MIDI, you never know what's gonna happen if you select offline and it kind of makes its own decisions. You wanna avoid that if at all possible. Also, I do not include my audio tail because that is where the loop actually happens. And then normalization, I turn that off. That way there's no weird compression going on. And then as soon as we're ready, we hit OK, we save this thing. I usually just put it on my desktop. And this one, I'm just gonna call it Elixir. And you will notice that at the end of this track, there was a bit of reverb tail, which is all that extra delay. We wanna chop that off or else the loop is not going to loop properly. And you'll also notice over here, I have a small intro by a few, it's like a couple hits. So if I wanna use that in the game, I would also bounce that small chunk and deliver that separately so that the developer can put it into the game engine and program it so that both tracks will be triggered at the appropriate time and that the second piece, the actual loop portion, will be looped instead of the intro. So I've done that quite a bit with this game. So now that we have this, let's go over to Audacity and I'm going to throw that track into Audacity and it's just a WAV file. Now you'll notice right off the bat that my project rate is set to 48,000. That's fine if we're dealing with WAV files, but since we want to convert this to an MP3 at the end of this, we're going to just go down to 44.1. And technically I'm already done because this track, if cut properly, 
within logic with my looper bar, it should loop properly. And we can test it real quick by just copying and pasting, going to the edge here, pasting. And there, it works just fine. So that's done. I can deliver that WAV file. But I always like to go the extra step and deliver the MP3 file that is a loop already so that the developer can hear the loop and they can critique it based on the actual implementation, how I want it to sound. That way when they're putting it into the game, they can actually listen back and make sure that it is looping properly. And furthermore, it gives you a track that you can already place directly onto a soundtrack once you're ready to at the end of the game release. Copy and paste my track three times in total, so technically two pastings. One of the cool features of Audacity is it highlights the edge with a yellow line so that you can very quickly find the edge, paste. So now I have three technical loops. So now I have three pieces here. I'm going to go to the final piece. I'm going to chop it down to only 15 seconds. So if this is 34 and a half seconds, that means plus 15 is going to be 49 and a half. So right here, I'm going to chop off the rest. And then I'm going to select that final chunk and fade out. So under effects, I'm going to go to fade out. I have a shortcut for that. So I'm going to do it twice. The reason I do it twice is one fade out doesn't actually get it to silence. So two fade outs will definitely get it to silence right here at the end. Then I go to the end of my track, go to generate silence. I also have a shortcut for that because I do this quite a bit. I'm going to type in two seconds because that is an appropriate amount to put at the end of your track. I will also go to the beginning of my track. You can scroll over or select Command A on Mac, Control A on Windows and hit left arrow and you'll teleport to the beginning of your track. It's a very quick way to just jump. And I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna hit my silence and this time I'm gonna put 15 milliseconds or 0.15 seconds. And what this does is it generates this tiny bit of silence at the beginning and it quickly creates my loop for me. So let's listen to a little bit. And then if I go to the end of my track, it should fade out seamlessly. And there it goes with two seconds of silence. It's ready to go. So I'm going to select everything, go to file, export either selected audio, that's good to do if I have a bunch of tracks loaded at once, or if it's the only thing loaded, export audio. And what's neat about Audacity is it gives you meta tags. So once I type in my name here, I can go to my format, in this case, MP3 files, make sure you have the lame encoder installed so that it can actually process this. I like to choose for my quality 320 kilobytes per second. It'd be okay if you did something a little bit less like 256, 224, or even 192. But when you go below that, the quality starts to degrade quite a bit. And it's such a small amount of memory difference that it's not really worth it. But 320 kilobytes per second is actually one tenth, just about, of the WAV file equivalent, which is pretty crazy. And you can't really hear the difference. So I, that's why I like to use these loops so much for sharing files to let the developer hear it because it's not gonna degrade so much compared to the WAV file. So once I've selected that, I go over to my metadata and here I can just type in all of the items that I need. So let's just, for the sake of this, Beer Blade, the track title is Elixir, and I can pump that out and it loads pretty quickly. And I can shoot that to my desktop. And now I have a WAV file and an MP3 file that I can deliver to the developer. Now I do wanna take one more minute to show you what if you wanted to keep the reverb tail? How would you still make a loop? So if I go back to my logic session and select the same amount, but I'm gonna go two bars longer because I want the reverb tail this time. And what I'm gonna do is do the same bouncing process I'm not gonna select reverb tail within logic because that doesn't actually 
give me the control that I want later. It, you don't want the computer to decide. You want to decide as the composer. So I'm going to say Elixir again, but this time with Reverb Tail. That way I know which file to choose. So let's switch over to Audacity, throw in that WAV file. Now I'll be honest that I think this will sound better with the reverb tail because it has all those cool delays at the end and you don't want to chop those off. So the way that I like to do this quickly is I copy and paste the track onto a secondary track and I will move it. And I'll move it by cutting it and pasting it somewhere around where it should loop. This way I can guess and check, but do it visually instead of just audibly. So for example, I'm going to play it and try to make sure that I know exactly where it's supposed to loop. And the easy way to cut off time, this is why I like to use Audacity versus a traditional DAW, which requires you to actually have space within the horizontal track. I like that this allows me to have silence. I can select just a small amount and because Audacity auto attaches to the edge, I can cut off just that little bit by selecting and hitting delete. And now I can test it again. And so I need a little bit more. Usually takes about three or four tries, but only takes about 30 seconds. So that was too much. So if you chop off too much, just copy a little bit of this silence and paste it. That way it bumps the other direction. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can hear more. Not enough. You can hear I'm getting closer. So I'm gonna do two pastes this time. So when you zoom in that far, it's really hard to tell. I think we're almost there. One more. There it is. That's exactly on. So now what I can do is I can find exactly where that highlight edge goes and I can chop off everything that comes after that point. And then I'm going to delete the secondary track, go to the beginning of the secondary track by clicking and using my arrow keys to go all the way to the back, to the forward, to go all the way back to the beginning, paste, and now I have my reverb tail actually playing at the same time as the beginning of the loop. Now, of course, if you were to play this at full volume, you're gonna hear a little bit of it and it feels out of place. So what we can do is turn it down, not dramatically, but maybe like negative four and you don't hear it too much. And if you've created a loop in such a way that it goes back to the same chord, it really shouldn't uh, be a problem. So I'm happy with that. That doesn't bother me at all. So I'm going to select everything this time. The way that we do that is we go to the bigger chunk, double click, hold shift and click on the other chunks and it will select everything. And I can, so the way that I do this is I go to the largest chunk, wherever the edge is and I can click and drag all the way upwards to get all of my tracks selected and then I do the same process of exporting my audio and in this case because I need a new wave file now that I've created the reverb tail with it I would go to other uncompressed files options keep it as a wave keep it as 24 bit or some developers like 16 bit and then you just save it from there the actual wave file and then you go through the same process with your mp3, we select everything, copy and paste. And the way that we paste into multiple tracks is we select in one of them, hold shift, push the down arrow key, and it will select both tracks, hit paste, and it'll copy both. Do this three times. 
total of three times. And now we have three chunks exactly like before, but now we have to go through, find the 15 second mark, which was 49 and a half, chop it off, do our fade out twice. And I would include this piece into the fade out. And then add your silence and you're done. So let's hear the loop now with the reverb tail and you're gonna notice a significant difference in the transparency and the fluidity between our sections. <laughs> Sounds way better to me, less choppy. Cool, huh? Now, if you are concerned about the reverb tail ruining the first portion of your loop, so for example, this chunk down here, number one, if you just don't like the way it sounds, or maybe you chose a different chord and it doesn't work well, all you have to do is delete that chunk but within Audacity, if you were to delete it, you notice how everything slides. So undo that. You can actually go to Generate Silence, and it will replace that exact amount, if you hit OK, with Silence. That way none of your timing gets messed up. But what we're doing now is, if you were to save just that piece, just that chunk, you could still go to File, Export, Selected Audio, export that as WAV file, and that would be number one that would be play number one and then you give the developer chunk number two which is this right here and what you can do like we've talked about you can select both chunks like this go to file selected export selected audio and you could make that pass through number two and this way if we have three files in total to deliver to the game developer we have an intro that little drum beat and then number two would be this first chunk which doesn't have the reverb tail. And then the third piece you would wanna send is this with reverb tail. And you can get as complicated as you want with this, but now you should know how to create a perfect loop in any situation with or without a reverb tail. That way you can always get the music that you envisioned creating from the start. Thanks for watching guys. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. Comment below and let me know what types of tips and tricks you are most interested in when it comes to studio composing and working with music for video games, TV, and film. I'll see you guys next week for another studio composing video.